And this next instructor is the fantastic Joette Giardina. So, um, from the balloon coach, um, if you haven't heard of her, are you not on social media at all? She's a very powerful force in social media and in the balloon industry itself. Uh, we, I have my notes somewhere around here that have been moved. There they are. Thank you very much, sir. Hiding. Um, and the title for this one is Marketing with Balloons. Uh, people do business with those they know, like and trust. Steps to create your marketing strat strategy, to have your referral partners and to target clients, experience your balloon designs and services in person to increase your sales. Plus outline to create press releases and a marketing plan. Because we had a fantastic um, discussion with Chris, Stuart and Dave. Um, and it's good to have a plan in place. So here's somebody um, that has a plan. She has and she's going to put it in place for you. So um, we shall welcome her to the Q Corner Convention, guys. Please welcome Joette. Hello, Joette. Can you hear us? Hello, guys. Hello. I can hear you. You are live Excellent. on Q Corner Convention. Please don't swear. Oh, I will not swear. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good. You're the one. Okay, fantastic. Excellent. Welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Can you hear me okay? We, we can, can hear you yes. perfectly well. Perfectly, yes. Uh, have you enjoyed the convention so far, Joette? I have. I've gotten a lot of great tips. It was fun to see the guys hanging out earlier with uh, Stuart and uh, Dave and uh, Chris. And then I was learning some great tips from Dennis like, um, most recently. Mm. So it's been fun. Yeah, absolutely. It's so golden um, nuggets. what we're going to do is we don't want to take up any more time than we need to. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump off here and we're going to hand over to Duet. So guys out there in internet land, um, sit back, relax. And I hope you've already downloaded the notes where we sent the link to. Um, so you can follow along with Duet. Here you go. They're all yours, Duet. All right enjoy great thanks guys you're gonna put up my slides for me we're gonna do that we'll... in just a moment wonderful yay oh how fun the love of the all the different technology that they have so guys for those of you who don't know me i'm joette i live in lakeland florida i am a cba i got that back in 2008 i actually was in the same class with eve when we were at balloon camp in vegas you can go to the next slide and I have been in the industry since 2003. I um, purchased Party People events in Lakeland, Florida. And are you guys seeing the next slide? Because I'm not. <laughs> um, so when I purchased Party People events, um, it had been a storefront that got closed down. And um, I moved the business to my house. And then in 2015, after I had taught at some conventions, a lot of people kept asking me questions about how to grow their business and how I was being so successful in growing from a home-based business. And my husband said, if you're going to spend that much time answering people's questions to help them grow your business, you got to get paid for it. So in 2015, I sold my company with the caveat that Jonathan Gerber would keep me as his marketing manager so I could stay the face of the company and help his company grow and be a part of a growing company, but being able to spend the majority of my time helping balloon professionals around the world grow their thriving business. So what's exciting for me is I got to see what it was like to be a home-based business. I had a 600 square foot warehouse in my backyard and worked from home. My husband's a teacher. And now I get to be a part of a team where we just launched our new party store, our balloon store. Uh, we have 5,000 square feet for our headquarters now. And we have multiple staff that work together to deliver all the decor for our clients, work the storefront and hang out. And I get to be a part of a growing team. And we do over $600,000 a year in decor. So it's pretty exciting to be able to see the differences from being home-based to now being a part of a team and having a warehouse and retail space. So um, I now get to serve as the manager of that new store. Unfortunately, I'm now back home into my 
office here due to the fact of the coronavirus canceling all of our events in Florida. So what's cool is I'm so glad that Qualitex put this event together so that we can help you prepare and grow. And I am also the producer of Balloon Boss Pro Summit, which is coming up in November. So the picture that you're seeing here is from a styled photo shoot. So talk about marketing with balloons. When you have beautiful balloons like that for a wedding shoot, now anybody can picture that at their wedding. Next slide. So what we're gonna do is jump right in. We're gonna dive into this pool right here. And I'm gonna talk to you about the very important information that people do business with those they know, like, and trust. Let me say that one more time. People do business with those they know, like, and trust. The reason that I got to be in this estate for a multimillionaire was because of my relationship with a high-end florist and event planner who trusted me to do the decor for her client. Next slide. So what I'm going to do is ask for you to step out of your comfort zone. And if you have not built a strong network of referral partners, you need to do that now. Now, you might be wondering, what on earth are you looking at? This is a photo that was taken at an art gallery in Tampa, Florida, which is about an hour and 20 minutes away from me. And what happened is an event planner in my county approached me years ago and said, Joette, I'm doing an art show where I'm picking different vendors that I work with, and they're going to go to the art museum, pick out a piece of art, and then you're going to use your medium to create art in an art display. And that night, I want you to showcase your artwork next to the piece of art that was your inspiration. And then I need you to speak in front of this group of people about what you do and why you chose that. I'm like, dude, what? I didn't see myself as an artist. I saw myself as a balloon decorator. So me going to an art gallery and saying that I was going to build something and put it on display was totally out of my comfort zone. But you know what? I stepped out of fear and I did it anyway. And one of the things I always tell people is you don't have to be self-confident. It's okay to have fears and doubts. But what you do to grow and thrive in your business and to grow as a human is that even when you're fearful, you step forward anyway. And by stepping forward and just going courageously after things that you may have never expected before, your confidence will grow. So here's what happened. I picked out the streets paved in gold. What I loved about it, it was an uh, found art project, which means the artist had glued buttons and coins and just found objects onto this canvas. So I was like, ooh, this will be fun to recreate out of balloons. And I had used a technique that I had learned from C Carmen Ballering on how to make the fantasy flowers. And I used the Qualitex gold balloons to make the fantasy flower dress. And then just the wire to be the arms lifting up that was mimicking two of the people in the story. And then of course we were able just to have all the jewels adorning this pedestal. What was phenomenal is sitting in that art gallery that night with patrons of the arts coming around to the event and just in awe that these were balloons. They had no idea that an uninflated balloon could be made into something so beautiful. So what was exciting for me is, no, this is not an award-winning piece. If I took this to World Balloon Convention, I would not win any awards. But that night in the eyes of the people that were there, I was the best balloon artist they had ever met, and they were surprised and educated about how cool balloons could be. So what I'm letting you know is from that opportunity of me stepping out of my comfort zone, I met a group of vendors who now refer me out to their clients because they experienced how amazing balloons could be. So next slide. So we sell what we share, okay? We sell what we share. If all I shared on my Facebook and my website were the huge, amazing pieces from World Balloon Convention that I've helped people create, or that I only shared that one art piece, then that's what clients would think I did. But what I decided very early on in my balloon business is that I wanted to find out what was most profitable 
what was most efficient for me to create to give me the most money. And I made sure to share the things that I wanted to create. So don't share any of those things that you don't like. Have you ever had one of those jobs where you went and you did it and everything went wrong? It took way longer than you thought. It took more product than you thought. And you're like, I'm never going to do that again. Those are the pictures not to put up on Facebook. Those are the pictures not to have on your website, because if you have them, people will ask for them. So this is an example of classic decor a lovely 20 foot ombre arch, 16 inch balloons, undersized outdoors with a cute little sun on top, was perfect for this person's birthday party. It lasted great for the event and it was super fun and met their needs and made me good money. So what I encourage you to do is as you create your marketing plan, I want you to write down the things that are most profitable for you, that are most efficient for you to create and gets you the most money. That 20 foot arch, anybody on our team can go into the warehouse, inflate it, put it into the van or into the trailer and get it to a client. They don't have to have a lot of expert training in the balloon industry. They just need a couple of weeks with us and they're good to go with that. Next slide. So want to do big events? This huge event is just really, if you look at it, a bunch of small events together. It was a hundred three foot balloons with collars, helium filled with a base. Anybody on our team can make that. They know how to fill three foots out of helium. They know how to make the quads for the tables. And then all of those amazing quick links to make the columns wrapped with color. And I can't remember if that was 12 or 16 feet in the air. This was about five and a half years ago. This event took us two days with a team of 10 each day to install. There was also five foots and three foots from the ceiling all throughout the space. And this was for a corporation's 40th anniversary in Orlando. But we showed our client what was possible with balloons and we were able to sell it based on our enthusiasm. And now these pictures help us sell it to other clients. Next slide. 30 foot arch. How many people here tonight? Go ahead and tell me, yes, you've done a 30 foot arch outdoors for a walk. This is the cancer walk. Um, we do this almost every single year, many times a year where you're just taking three 10 foot pieces, putting them together to make a 30 foot arch with some great outdoor bases. It fits in the trailer and you just go out in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, set it up and you're done. This again is something anybody on your staff can do and it makes good money. By having these type of arches out at events, you are now selling to the next event because everybody who's at that event is gonna ask who made that balloon arch. So if you're ever asked to do something for free or a donation, make sure you got a sign on the underneath of that. Next slide. The more you're able to get out in front of the people who are your target market with your balloons and have those photos, the more you're going to be able to sell. The local college here is one of our top clients that I've had since I bought the company in 2003. Simple topiary balls, 12 balloons grouped together on the tent poles and then two quads and some curly cues for the centerpieces with a heavy sand weight. And then around the campus, we put the fun waivers where you just have three quads, different sizes, the 350 and 260 flares on it. It's fun. And again, anybody on our staff can do it. When I first got this account, the only thing they ever ordered from us was two helium balloons on a string. And I asked them one time, why is it that you buy two helium balloons on a string. And they said, well, our colors are red and white. So that's all we need, one of each. And I said, well, can we at least bump that up to three and do one red, I mean, two reds and one white in the middle? And they're like, oh, okay, we can try that. And then I started going to conventions and learning different skills. And I would come back and say, hey, I can make these fun centerpieces with the curly cues. And rather than, you know, this price, we're going to double it. And oh, okay, sure, we'll do that. That sounds great, Joette. And then they always wanted helium balloons, which outdoors is always gonna hit you in the head when it's windy. 
I taught them about topiary balls. I showed them photos of what it looks like and then they bought it. So again, you're going to sell what you show and you have to have the confidence to share new ideas. Even if that client's just asking you for three balloons on a string, tell them the other things that are available with our company. Next slide. Hot air balloon. When we did the very first slide of us jumping into that pool, I told you that the way that I had gotten that job was through an event planner and florist who trusted me with her client. Well, this is Heather. Heather was one of the other artists at that art show with me. And she had done a beautiful piece of art out of her flowers. And by being in that event, she was able to see what I am capable of doing. And then she was able to trust me with her clients. And she's like, hey, Joette, we're doing this special event. It's for a nonprofit. It's a hot air balloon theme. Oh, the places you'll go. Dr. Seuss, we'd like you to do something. And originally she was asking me for three foot balloons, helium filled, with in the, inside the net. And I'm like, you know, that's kind of cool, but I've always wanted to make a air filled hot air balloon. I've had several friends in the industry that have made them. I know the technique to do it. Um, what's your budget? And she said, we only have a thousand dollars. And I said, you know what? This usually would cost more than a thousand dollars, but because it's for the United Way, I would love to help give back to this event, be a part of it and work with you and give you this amazing photo op. So what I did is I took what their budget was. I was still profitable. It still paid for the salary for the two people who worked with me on it and all of our supplies and I made money and I got this amazing photo. And also I made the download of how to make this because I went ahead, no one else had a recipe for how to make it. So I made that into a download, which has brought me other income, which has been great. But what I want to urge you is when people in your community ask you to donate something or give a discount, think about number one, people need to experience your balloons firsthand to really understand their full value. And if you want to support your local community and give back to them, pick a couple of organizations or nonprofits that you want to support fully, okay? But you're not gonna donate your services you're going to serve as a sponsor. You're gonna sponsor an event that you feel strongly about personally that you want your company to give back to, or you're gonna to donate to an event that you know the target clients that you wanna work with and the referral partners that you want to be partnering with are gonna be at that event. So only select events where it's a win-win, where it just makes your heart feel good or the right people are gonna be at that event so they can experience your balloons so that you can get more sales. All right, next slide. And anybody who's coming on late, if you didn't already, I do have the notes online. You can just go to segment 21 and press the download. So bridal fairs. Um, kids fairs, um, you name it, business to business expos, everybody has an expo and often ask me if they should be a participant in them. So here's the thing, to decide to be in an expo, you want to make sure that your target market, the people that you want to work with are gonna be at that event. Because if you are not a person who does parties for children, if you do not like kids, and you have no desire to do birthdays, then don't go to a kid's fair. You'll be miserable, all right? But if you're like us, we, with Party People Events, also do fabric backdrops. So the fabric that you see in this picture, that is our black and white fabric. Um, it's one of the rental items that we do. So for bridal fairs, it's great for me to put up our fabric and our balloons together and to be able to be there. And you know who I'm there for? I'm there to talk to the other vendors. Yeah, I'm gonna to talk to the brides and I want to interact with them. But from my experience since 2003, I have found that the number one person that I'm going to an expo for is to talk to the other businesses that are at that event. And yes, it's gonna be some icing on the cake if a couple of brides sign up and use us for their services. This was my number one booth 
of people giving me their information and asking me to follow up with them. I made a photo mound. I call it an organic mound because a lot of women, we don't like the lower half of our body to be seen. You don't need to see that we need to lose a little on our tummies. So we can hide behind that mound in front of us. Then the word bride was there. And then we had the Qualitex heart that you could put your head in or hold it to the side. We had a line waiting for brides and their bridesmaids to come into our booth and take selfies. People took boomerangs, they hashtagged us. It was a fun event because I made it interactive. I made it about the bride and her bridal party and made it fun. So if you're going to be doing any type of booth, you want to make sure you create decor that gets people interactive and hanging out with your balloons and wanting it for their next event. All right. The other thing about any type of expo or a bridal fair is you want to make most of the downtime. Typically with a bridal fair, they always have a fashion show and also a lot of different teen showcases and things or um, mitzvah showcases will have a a time where they have the um, fashion show up on the stage. So we typically also serve as a sponsor for the event where we're trading out the decor for the stage for our booth because I don't want to pay to be at a booth. I very, I think I've only paid for a booth maybe once or twice um, in uh, 17 years. So with your money, instead of paying them money to be at the event, you're putting your money into your balloons and into your creative time to set up that stage. Now what's gonna happen is your stage decor is gonna get professional photography taken at the event that you're gonna be able to use later in your marketing. It's going to get announced from the stage and typically with the bridal fairs when we sponsor our names then go on the flyers go on the website we get announced from stage and i actually usually get some stage time since i'm not afraid to stand up on the stage and talk on the mic and let the brides know who i am so again any time that you're participating in an event don't do it small go big and remember that instead of paying money just to throw it out the window and put yourself into print ads you want to put your money into your man hours and your balloons for people to experience and understand how magical the balloons are that we create. Next slide. All right. So this was my family um, a good 16 years ago. <laughs> uh, my daughter is now 20. And we were asked to be a part of an event for the Disney on Ice at our convention center. Um, basically they had no budget, but they wanted to put on a special community event that would promote the Disney on ice tickets. People would come in as they were buying their tickets for the event and interact and play games. And like all the people at the convention center were setting up game booths and coloring sheets and things like that. I was very new to the industry. I was very new to our area. I didn't grow up here in Lakeland, Florida. I didn't know anybody. So what was exciting for me is that this was an opportunity for me to get out in front of the community and let people know I was here. So again, by building this display, we were actually supposed to have, um, we did a press release and everything and the media was supposed to come and film that but somebody's dog bit somebody and then all the camera crews went to that story. But we had set things up ahead of time that we had the press releases done, we had our logo sh shirts to wear and we were set to make an impression on that day and make the most out of our marketing. To this day, we still do a ton of balloons at that venue. And in fact, I just met with the staff there a couple of weeks ago, um, just to remind them about all the services that we offer. So. Being in a location where other people are having parties, that's where you want people to see what you do, right? So yes, when that sales team member says, hey, can you help me out? Well, it's if you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Yeah, I'm going to help you out because I want to be in your location more. So marketing is not about being a pushy salesman, okay? Marketing is not about being a pushy salesman. Marketing is about building relationships. So through this of me saying, yes, I will come and I will decorate for this event, allowed me to bridge a relationship with that venue that is still our client today. Next slide. So I want you to get involved. 
If you're a person who hides behind, I'm too busy, I'm always making the balloons, I'm always on the computer working with my clients, I don't have time to network, but you aren't making as much money as you want and you don't have as many clients as you want, then I'm gonna let you know right now, you gotta get out from behind your computer and you need to be the face of your company, all right? Now, I understand some people, this is not their wheelhouse. They don't feel comfortable in front of others. They get nervous, they get tongue-tied, they don't know what to say. So here's what I'm gonna tell you. Two years ago, I weighed 99 more pounds than I do now. In the last two years, I've lost 99 pounds, okay? So if this obese person can go into a place where everybody else is in the perfect business attire, super skinny, cute people, and you know that when you're going to like a chamber meeting and things like that, the guys are just there to look at the cute chicks and hills. If I was able to step out into those events where I'm normally comfortable in tennis shoes and shorts, and instead I'm putting on a business suit and dress pants and doing my makeup, that was totally out of my comfort zone. I had a degree in outdoor education. I used to teach rappelling and rock climbing, okay? So being all fancy and dressed up and business-like was not my gig. But I realized that as a business owner, I needed to grow and develop and become a business person. So many people say, oh, well, they just see me as the balloon lady. They don't see me as a business owner. Well, then I ask you to look in the mirror. Do you look like a business owner? Are you walking around in a tie-dyed shirt, funky tennis shoes, and kind of scruffy looking? Or are you getting your hair done? If you're a lady, putting on some makeup. If you're a guy, are you grooming appropriately? Are you taking a shower so you smell good? And are you getting dressed for success? Now, please understand, I know there's a lot of entertainers on this call. If you are an entertainer, yes, there are times that it's okay to be in costume or to wear something fanciful. But this is American Business Women's Association. And as you can see, the ladies in that, most of them are either in a dress, heels, or a jacket. So my job going in there is to be a part of that and to look like them and fit in, all right? So I had to go to the store <laughs> and buy new clothes so that I looked good for those events, all right? Now, there were a couple of times where I did show up in my um, t-shirt and my jeans because I was on my way to another event right after my um, going to the meeting. But when I could, I dressed the part. I went to American Business Women's Association to grow as a business owner. I got connected with other business owners and people who worked for the people that I wanted to work with. Because the ladies in that group work for the local banks, the local colleges, the local schools, and they were the ones I needed to hang out with. What I did is I was very fortunate is in 2008, when I got my CBA, I helped Melissa Vinson become designer of the year at Balloon Camp. And during that event, the winner of that was able to go to China and somebody else who was supposed to go to China was not able to go. So I was very fortunate to help Melissa Vinson do a really cool event in China with Guido Verhoff. And we did a fashion show back in 2008 in Shanghai, China. I went to American Business Women's Association when they had a little business to business trade show, all the ladies set up booths and then invited guests to come and meet all the other businesses. I put up a video of my time in China of the balloons that were on the um, pond to promote the event and of the actual fashion show. That caught people's attention. They walked through my booth and they're like, what? You did balloons in China? That's amazing. Okay, I hooked them in. And then I showed them the pictures of what I want to sell. I showed them the columns. I showed them the arches. I showed them the centerpieces. And because of me doing that at that trade show and being a part of ABWA, it's how I got my first $10,000 job. I had put down on my goals that I wanted to have a $10,000 event. This was back when my highest was about $2,000. Working by myself with just a few friends as needed, but I had a goal of $10,000. 
by being connected in American Business Women's Association, by sharing my story and sharing what balloons could do, a lady walked up to me and said, hey, Joette, do you think you can help me out? We're celebrating a orange growers anniversary party. And I think like I want like a big orange tree and I need centerpieces. It's at a venue that's just being built. Do you think you can handle it? It's a $10,000 budget. Yes, I can handle it. I got this. And then whew, deep breath. How am I going to do this? And then I pulled together everybody I'd ever trained to do balloons to help me put that event on. If I had not built sincere relationships and let people know about me to build that know, like, and trust, I would have never gotten that first $10,000 event because you're not just going to hand that off to anybody you want to. That was for her, her showcase. That was the thing that people were trusting her to get the right vendors to make that event phenomenal. And so she needed to trust the person who was doing it for them. All right, next slide. At ABWA, over the years, I became a speaker from time to time. And I actually taught people how to network. And I talked to people about how to build relationships and how to do a 30 second infomercial on yourself. And one of the days when I spoke, this was what I put up on either side of the podium. It's just a three foot balloon, a couple of quads and the curly cues. But it allowed people in that room to see that balloons could be done differently than what they had seen before of just balloons on the string from the local party city. I was able to go in there and be with building relationships with my target market and the people that I wanted to be my referral partners. And over the years, I had many different opportunities that they would give me a small budget and then I would do something a little bit larger for them. So I'm going to tell you about a couple of groups that you can be a part of. You can choose your local chamber. I only encourage you to do the chamber in the area you actually want to service. If where you live is not the people you want to service, then you want to drive to the chamber of where the people are that you want to work with. The events industry has many different organizations like MPI, which Meeting Professional International. Um, there's also um, ILEA, um, there's NACE, there's your local Rotary Clubs or Kiwanis Clubs. These, especially in smaller communities, are really good ways to connect with other people who just want to give back to their community. And then there's also groups like the Chamber Leads Group, or with us, we have the Lakeland Business Leaders Group, which is a group that meets about once a month, but they also have an online group where we can hang out with each other and promote our business. And then we can also have groups like BNI that are um, a group that you pay that's a leads group. And when you go to that group, you're pretty much passing leads. Like if there's somebody in your group that is a person who does pesticide control, then you're supposed to refer them anytime. Or there's somebody who's an AC repairman. Anytime somebody's air conditioner gets um, busted, you're gonna let people know that that's the AC guy. The thing that I didn't like about the direct leads groups is for me, I didn't seem to know enough people who needed the services of the other people who were at the group. So I felt a little strange because I wasn't always to get, able to give back a direct referral. The way I look at going to a networking event, if you're a person who's nervous, if you're a person who gets butterflies in your stomach about even thinking about having to introduce yourself to somebody new, let alone have to stand up in front of a table of 20 or 30 people and say, hi, I'm Joette with Party People Events. If that scares you, I want you to think about it. Your job is just to walk into that room and make one new friend. Your job is to walk in and just find somebody else who might also be a wallflower and introduce that guys. <laughs> Do we've got everybody still here? All right, cool, cool, cool. So the number one thing that you want to do is you want to build relationships with the people in your community so that they know, like, and trust you and that they can be your referral partners to let other people know about your business. Next slide. Oh, thank you, Brenda. That's appreciate. All right. So we do not sell balloons. We sell the emotions the balloons create. So think about this. Who do you want to decorate for? Write it down. Next slide. Who do you want to 
decorate for. Do you want to do proms and homecomings and events for schools? Do you want to do just children's birthday parties? Do you wanna do corporate galas? What type of events do you want to do? And who are the people that can refer you to do that service? This event was one of those times where I became a sponsor for an event. Who is gonna turn down somebody that comes to you and says, Joette, I'm planning a prom for kids with cancer. More than likely, this will be the last dance that they go to, and next year they will probably have passed away. We're granting wishes for children to be able to experience a prom where they can get dressed up with makeup, um, salons are donating their services to get them made up, dress companies are donating the dresses, the limos are being donated to bring them to the events, their parents get to come to the events and professional photographers, professional photographers will be able to take pictures of the entire event so that these families can have these special precious photos of their kids. These kids are anywhere from age six to teenagers. So some of them aren't even at the age to go to a prom yet. So that tugged at my heartstrings, okay? <laughs> the other thing is, is a person that was asking me is a person who was good friends <laughs> with that florist and was the person who originally asked me to be in the art show. So here's the thing, she asked me to be in the art show and from that art show got me a client that's given me tons of referrals. Now she's asking me to do an event in a venue I haven't been at with other event planners that I have not worked for yet, but I want to. So the answer was yes. They got me on what the event was and they got me on the people who was gonna be in that room. So I did these wonderful, fun dice. It was a casino theme. So we did this, the dice with the um, quick links and then the um, dance floor and the kids danced party and had a great time. And you know what? One of our top clients now that refers us to people who are football players for amazing events, um, that refer us to other corporations and to other clients is because of that event, because I said yes, and that I allowed event planners to experience balloons in a way they had never seen them before. And because of that, I was able to get people to start calling us and be a client. Now, did it happen the next day? It did not. About a year later <clears throat> is when we got the first call. So that's the other thing that I want you to know when you're marketing with your balloons and when you're building relationships with referral partners and when you're building relationships with your target clients, you might get a no at first. You might be like, nope, it's not gonna happen. We're not gonna use balloons or mm, they don't know you yet. It takes time to build the know, like, and trust. So again, pick the events wisely of who you want to work with and sponsor the event and make sure it's something you can be there. So I was actually at that event. My uh, family stayed with me at the hotel. We dressed up for prom and we danced the night away with those kids, with the parents and with the other sponsors of that event so that we were a part of that event to build relationships. Next slide. So we don't sell the balloons, we sell the emotions that were created and now people know about what you do. So when you're writing your marketing plan, what are the events that are being held at venues that you want to work at? So look on your community calendars, check with the sales directors at the venues that you want to work at and find out what's happening there. Where are your target clients hanging out? Are your target clients parents of um, preschoolers and elementary schoolers? Then you're gonna go hang out and be on the PTO of that school. Are your target clients corporate people? Well, then you're gonna go hang out at the business meeting that those decision makers are hanging out at. What are the activities that your networking partners are attending? The local florist, the baker, the catering company, the rental companies, the DJs, the AV and lighting people, where are they hanging out at? Go get in that group and rub shoulders with them and get to know them. But don't go there as a sleazy salesman. Don't just go there shoving your cards in their face. All right, I had to tell you a funny story. 
at one of those American Business Women's Association meetings that I was asked to speak at to talk about building relationships and networking and how to do your 30 second infomercial. While I was setting up that morning, a lady walked up to me and stuffed her hand in my pocket to give me some vitamins or pills. I didn't know her. And I'm like, dude, personal bubble, you're in my space, dude. It took everything I had to not um, call her out on the carpet during my conversation. But I did make it very clear that when you're in a networking situation, you don't want to invade other people's space and you don't want to be a pushy salesperson. You want to make sure that you are always asking the person about themselves and that you are having an interaction before you ever go give your card to somebody. And definitely don't put your hand in somebody else's pocket. They'll get really offended. So what I want to know is right now, what are you guys writing down? When you think about who you want to market with and who you want to hang out with, what type of events or venues do you want to be at? Where are your target clients hanging out and what activities are your networking partners at? Share some of those in the chat. I'd love to see them. All right, next slide. So I know it's not a great picture and it doesn't look like much. It's three foot purple balloons and some fabric from the ceiling. But the backstory on this event was in 2004, I had met one of the high-end event planners in our area, super, super sweet person at a um, bridal networking event. And she's like, Joette, I love you. You're a great person. Your balloons are pretty, but my clients will never use you because balloons don't have a place at a wedding. None of my clients will want to use your product. It's just not what we do. They're balloons. But see, in her head, balloons were 11 inch helium balloons on a string. That's what she had in her head because that's what she had experienced. But now what happened is because I said yes to one of the sales directors at one of the local venues that I work with all the time, one of the country clubs, um, she was on the committee for the March of Dimes chef's auction. And she said, Joette, can you please help me out? Our committee blows up a lot of balloons. We have the helium donated. We just buy some balloons from Party City, but we need help getting them inflated. And could you bring your high speed inflators? I said, yes. Why did I say yes? Because she's a person who referred a ton of business to me. I went to the event the first year and it looked like balloons had thrown up all over the place. It was just way too many balloons. It wasn't appropriate. So the next year I served on the committee for the March of Dimes Chefs Auction. This is an event that a thousand people come to at our um, local convention center. And it's the top people that I wanna work with because the local companies that have big events sponsor the event and have a table of 10. And typically one of the decision makers from that company comes to the event and hangs out with the other employees and their families. So I said yes to becoming a sponsor the next year for the March of Dimes Chefs Auction. I said, here's the thing though, I'll take your $200 budget and I will give you more than $200 worth of decor. And so their colors are purple and white. We did some other stuff up on the stage and a cool entrance, but these three foot balloons from the ceiling with fabric looked amazing in person, especially at night when the lights came down. And when I was setting up, this high-end event planner who did the floral arrangements on the other side of the room stopped me while I was having a conversation to give me a high five. And she's like, Joette, this is amazing. I had no idea balloons could be so elegant. The way you mix the fabric with the balloons is phenomenal. Now, again, guys, you're looking at that going, Joette, there's nothing much in this picture. But it's that I allowed the person to see balloons in a different way than she had ever seen before. And you know what? She is now one of our great referral partners. And we have decorated for some really cool birthday parties under tents where we turned it into like a Little Mermaid's um, Under the Sea. We've done several other events for her corporate clients and people having um, parties in their beautiful estates. So again, by me being able to showcase what balloons could do at an event that my target referral partners were a part of and that my target clients were attending allowed me to be able to make more money in the future. So I hope you guys are understanding it. When you're wanting to gain 
those clients, this is how you do it, is by hanging out where the place is that the targets you work for. I see a question about how do you get more corporate clients? And with this, that event was sponsored by other corporations that have annual awards banquets. And that's how I landed several awards banquets in our local area was because people saw how I could take a big space and make it look really great. Next slide. All right. So, um, Did I lock up again? No. Okay. Um, all right, cool. So these are some things that you want to do before you do an event. If you are doing something where you're a sponsor for an event and that you are going to be um, recognized in some way at the event, go ahead and make a story about it ahead of time and do a press release to the local TV, newspaper, and radio because they always are in need of feel-good stories. In your notes is actually a press release, the outline of how you can write one. Send the um, release out in advance that people could actually come and watch you do the balloons and see what's being created. In your press release, give it a catchy title, make it timely, make it human interest, make it have a clear timeline of when it's happening and inviting them to come see the work in progress. Next slide. So one of the examples of doing that is several years ago, my um, first hands-on um, workshop was in Chicago and I teamed up with Balloons by Tommy to do parade promotions and profits for two years. And during that class on um, Thursday night, I had everybody in class write a press release with me. And I asked everybody to write a press release that they were at that training in Chicago and that they were with the other balloon artists from around the United States going to be a part of the Pride Parade. And I looked at Tommy and Scott and I'm like, do you guys ever send out press releases? And they're like, no. So right there and then, Scott put the press release to get together and sent it out. The next day, we had the local TV crew there and the local radio station to interview Tommy about being in the Chicago Pride Parade. What was really, really cool is here we are having my first teaching workshop um, out of the area with balloon professionals from around the United States. And we ended up having the news crews come. And then that night when we were having dinner at Tommy and Scott's house, <clears throat> we were able to gather in the living room and watch ourselves on TV. It was awesome. So go ahead to the next slide. I asked the news anchor and her cameraman when they were done with the interviews, I said, why did you choose us? I know I'm sure a lot of people sent you press releases about them being in the Chicago Pride Parade. Why did you choose coming to our event? And they said, we knew the balloons would be colorful. We knew that they would look great on TV and that it would be something fun and festive and look great on camera. So balloons look awesome on camera. They make a good, feel good news story. So use that and put out a press release when you can, when it's appropriate, especially if you're in something where you're donating to an organization or you're providing decor for some special thing, even if people are paying you for it, if it's a really cool event that is a charitable event in your, in your um, community, that's newsworthy. The other thing, if you're participating in a parade, if you're one of those people who've been a part of our promotions and profits um, workshops that we've had in Orlando and in Chicago, and you have all the skills for doing parades or you've taught at other, um, or learned the information at other classes, when you go to do a parade, put a press release out in advance. Let your local TV, radio, and newspapers know what you're doing because they may come and interview at you ahead of time or at least capture the story at the end. So use the power of the press release because it helps people get to know, like, and trust you, right? I mean, if now they see Balloons by Tommy on TV, they're going to think about that or when they're doing a scroll and they're looking for balloons and now they see balloons by tommy on their website they're going to, oh yeah i saw this news story with them it's building that know like and trust all right next slide 
So here's the thing. Balloons help you sell. Balloons get the attention of other people. And this is a picture that is actually from Tina Santillary. She is amazing. I always love her work. And this is just so pretty and bold. Um, when you have a storefront or a warehouse, or even if you work from your home, make use of putting balloons outside. So right now during this time of social distancing and the coronavirus, if you are in an area where you're not allowed to go out and do deliveries and do actual jobs right now, that's where we're at. We're not doing any deliveries currently here. Um, I've not been in our store for the last two weeks. It's kind of crazy. Um, but you know what, in front of my home, I was a part of 1 million bubbles of joy. And so out front, five days later, there are balloons that say, be, uh, be safe, be kind. My latex has gone down now five days later, but my foils are still up and I'm gonna replenish it and put other balloons up. Why? Because it brings joy to my friends in my neighborhood and the people walking by appreciate it. It brings joy and attention. When we were at the storefront and as soon as I get back to the storefront, having balloons out front drew attention of the people driving by or the people stopping at the shops next to me to come in. So don't forget how powerful our balloons are. I think sometimes people get in a storefront and they forget to take their balloons just right outside their door. So make sure you put them out by your street, put them out in front of your building, um, make sure that you're following the codes that you need to, but those balloons being outside draw attention. The last people who have been coming into our storefront, one of them was for a graduation party uh, for May. And they're like, oh my gosh, we saw your balloons outside every day when I was driving home from work and I knew I had to stop by. They didn't stop by the first time. They didn't stop by the second time. But about a week after seeing my balloons outside, because we kept on putting balloons out every single day, they stopped. So that's the other thing about marketing with balloons. It's not a one and done thing. You have to keep putting the balloons outside. If you don't have a storefront, then think about who are those referral apartment, referral part, oh, partners that you wanna work with. Maybe your local bakery, maybe a local florist, um, an event planner, a catering, a rental company. Where's another place where people are going that you wanna work with that can see your balloons and donate something to them on a regular basis basis that's a marketing tool. Use your money in your balloons and your time versus just throwing money into ads. Next slide. Style photo shoots. How many people here have participated in a style photo shoot? Um, go ahead and do the chat. This is a really cool style photo shoot. It's a part of my Orlando hands-on training. Thank you, Qualitex, for being a sponsor. Um, this one was from two years ago in Orlando, and Cody Williams and um, Katie Byrne taught on organic designs. And so everybody at the event put together the balloons for this. And we set it up as a styled photo shoot where I had the bride and groom models come in and we had professional photography taken of them at the event. You can also do this locally by networking with the local venues that you want to work with. If you say, hey, Joette, I don't have pictures of my beautiful balloons in a pretty venue. Well, then set it up with that sales manager of, hey, I'd like to set it up where we could work together and have a styled photo shoot. Get together with a friend that is a great photographer. Get together with a florist. Get together with those different event people that you want to work with on a regular basis and each of you bring something to the table. So the professional photographer will take all the pictures and get them out to everybody. The venue donates the space. The linen company brings in the linens. You bring in your beautiful balloons. The cake company brings in their cake and now you stage a styled photo shoot. One of the things with a styled photo shoot is what is going to make the most impression when you're putting things out on social media is you want to make sure you capture pictures of people in the balloons and experience in it. And if you hang out with me in my Balloon Coach community group or check out things at ballooncoach.com, you'll see that we have all these amazing photos from the style photo shoot of them dancing on the dance floor and interacting with the balloons. And we actually did it in two different color schemes. So we had one that was a purple and lavenders. And then we had another one that I showed you at the very beginning 
where he had that beautiful hoop where it was in the bright pinks and oranges. So Cody um, Williams from Cody's Red Balloon, big shout out for helping me with the design concepts for that. So next slide. All right. If you aren't being a part of an event with someone else, then create an event. Okay, so we talked about creating the style shoot. On the left, this is Party People Events' new 5,000 square foot space. It was my home away from home over the last couple of months, and I'm so sad for the last two weeks that I'm no longer there and I'm just working out of my office. Um, but what we did a couple of weeks ago is we had our grand opening celebration. We planned a ribbon cutting with our local chamber. And what we did is I had a friend that has a massage therapist because a part of our Balloon Boss Pro Summit in Orlando is I have massage therapy in the evening for people to have spa treatments um, because massage is what all of our bodies need after the hard work that we usually do as balloon professionals. So I knew that people loved the massage at that event. I asked him, hey, do you mind coming and doing chair massages at our grand opening? So it's a way for him to show people what he does, right? So he does it for free and has his business cards. We did um, a picture out front and then inside Jonathan Gerber decked the place out with amazing balloon decor so that the people coming to the event could experience balloons in a way they never had before. They all took pictures at the event. The mayor of Auburndale spoke at the event. The chamber members talked and networked and we made it into a party at our balloon warehouse. Now, what you do from that is now people are exposed to you and the next day we had two people come in from the event to ask about booking for future events so again people do business with people they know like and trust but if they had never walked in your doors before they don't know you're there so plan some type of special event where people can get in your doors. I know several people will even do it where they might have like a twisting class for kids. They may bring in a character during a special holiday, like you might bring in Santa during Christmas and do photo ops at your place, just as a way for people to get into your store. Next slide. Bottom line is people do business with people they know, like, and trust and balloons create an emotional response for people. People aren't going to understand the full emotion of the balloons until they're in a room with them. This beautiful wall was designed by Stuart Davies last year at our training in Orlando. And he did the balloon boss letters and it looked phenomenal. And you're in a room with the chair covers and the sashes and the beautiful columns it felt special. You felt good to be in that room and it was a wow statement. Imagine that that is your corporate sponsor of a local event with their name in balloons. People need to experience this and see what it looks like to fully understand it. And now I'm not saying just to go out and donate things all the time. Please understand that's not what I'm saying, but work with people's budgets and maybe sometimes give a little bit more and be able to do something that you want so that you have those photos to sell with. The other part is, is use the pictures from going to trainings and events to help educate people of what is possible. Just make sure that you know the techniques that you're able to do it. Um, next slide. All right, so I just wanted to let people know that Balloon Boss Pro Summit 2020 will be having a CBA exam on November 7th for all of those who are attending the Balloon Boss Pro Summit in Orlando. If you'd like more information, you can go to balloonbosspro.com and also you can always talk to RJ at Qualitex uh, for information. I do have an online study group for that. And then if you can go back to the Balloon Boss slide for me, back up one. Um, bottom line is guys, get people in the room with your balloons, find the clients who have the money and show them the pictures of what's possible. Your enthusiasm about the balloons and your confidence and how amazing things are going to look is what's going to sell. I'd be glad to go ahead and open this up for questions. 
I'm trying to read the chat to see if there's any questions that I can answer for you guys on marketing with balloons. I would love for you to stay connected with me. And I have a Facebook group called Balloon Coach Community. You're more than welcome to hang out and ask me questions there. Um, and I just want to give a huge shout out to Qualitex for putting this all together. Keith and Dom are phenomenal. Um, just from doing the webinars that I've been doing for the last five years, I know how crazy technology can be. And their technology is way, way better than mine. Um, their technology is phenomenal over the top to put this together. So during this time of struggle where we can sometimes be fearful, I want to remind you to choose joy. Each day is an opportunity for us to bring sunshine to people through our balloons. I'm so excited about the One Million Bubbles of Joy program that so many people have um, participated in. I can't wait for the next version that's coming up in Easter. It's a way for us to stay creative at our homes um, if we're on quarantine and can't leave and people still be able to see balloons and us be creative. And it's a great way for you to use a press release. Many people have gotten press off of that. So that's a way for you to be creative right now during this time. The other thing is, is you can just turn in a human interest story right now where you share pictures of what you've done at your home um, or if you participated in the One Million Bubbles of Joy or the next one that's coming up, you can send that out as a press release for people to do a story on you for them to experience a little bit about how balloons bring joy to others. All right, I'm just double checking to see if I see any questions in the chat that I can answer for you guys. Thanks so much for everybody for being on tonight. I've appreciated it. And I really appreciate Qualitex being a sponsor of other education. They are a sponsor for Balloon Boss Pro Summit and they rock. They certainly do. And they're not the only one around here that rocks, Joeth. Well done. That was a full packed hour of just awesomeness. Can we have Thanks, some guys. show Thank of you. appreciation in the chat, please? I saw some golden nuggets coming nuggets up on and there. Nuggets and thumbs, please. But I think what happened was, uh, I think people were so engrossed by what you were saying that they weren't really in the chat so much because they were just absolutely hanging on your every word, Joe. Can you hear us now, Joe? I can. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Super. Yes. Yeah, they were hanging on your um, on your every word. You. Um, it was a brilliant presentation. Um, that we could all learn from, Joeth. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Have a great time. Thanks so much for what you're doing. You guys are rocking this. Oh, thank you very much. The the great thing as well is that um, we really needed this class. This is this is exactly what we needed. You know, when we, we were talking earlier about all the different things that were going on in the industries at the moment, having a plan is the best way forward, right? It's it's putting right. an action plan in place and and sticking to the plan. Right. And right now, why people aren't being able to deliver balloons, they can actually start messaging those other referral partners that they want to work with. This is a great time to talk to people because they're not busy. Exactly. <laughs> I like the, you know, the the little thing about the um, how to write a press release as well. Yeah. You know, if they've participated in this convention and they've, you know, drove their business forward, that's a great thing to share. Put that out there yes. in, in, in their community and actually put them at the top of the pile of, you know, when we do get back out there ready to roll, that their name's at the top. It's at the, you know, the forefront of people's thoughts. So, yes, you know, yes. these are all things that they can do now. So, somebody actually said in the chat as well, they said that this was absolutely the perfect time for this class. Mm. It was, Couldn't it was agree more. Well, I, good. I'm so glad to help you guys out. And if there's anything I can do with y'all in the future, just give me a call. I'm awesome. sure Thank we you, will. Joy. Okay, that's, don't a, that's a deal. Okay, that's a onto deal. Go to the worldballoonconvention.com as well if you haven't already done that and check out Joette's class notes there on segment 21. 21. Uh, you can download those, keep them, print them. Or go back up through the chat as well. Uh, the link's been put on there at least five times I've seen. Yeah. You can link directly <laughs> to the notes and it's worthwhile. Download that PDF um, for your own benefit for your business. Yes, so thank cool. you, Joette. Stay safe. All right. Thanks, guys. Take care. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye.